Hello, uh, my name is the Juggernaut. I'm here today to talk to you with another A Play update. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about what we got coming in 2018. Obviously, you're probably saying to yourself, what do you mean 2018 is already over? But no, we're actually just getting ramped up. Um, June is here, okay? And a lot of stuff has been happening. There's been a lot of planning in the last few months. There's been some transitioning. Um, I've moved uh, in 2017, towards the end, I moved uh, to the West Coast to get some stuff together to work with War Room Studios and Transcendent Productions out there and some of the projects that we were completing. And then in 2018, we tried to get some other things going out there on the West Coast, and then I was able to move back to the East Coast and reset up operations here. So if you've been following me on Facebook, you've seen a lot of this stuff happening. You've been like, what is Mark doing? This is a little bit about what we're doing, okay? So... I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the Citizen Response Program, okay? Citizen Response is going to be, from this point forward, in 2018, everything that APLE stands for, everything that APLE is about, okay? Everything that PrivateLawEnforcement.com is pointing to, because there's a lot of reasons why, okay? There's a lot of martial arts in America, okay? APLE Krav Maga, APLE Wing Chun, the programs that we were doing, um, that were focused primarily on hand-to-hand -hand strategies are great, but we there's there's not the need for it that I believe there is for the rest of these programs. Okay, what? And then we get then we talk about armed response. Okay, and the the warfighter initiative that APLE launched. Okay, the armed response. So so basically, citizen response is going to be four components. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about these four components, four modules. I like to think of them as four doors into the same house, which is APLE. Okay, everything. From 2001, I was in Amsterdam. 9-11, 2001, I was in Amsterdam. I was actually living about five miles from Amsterdam, but I was teaching in Amsterdam. And I was actually driving my three, at the time I had three small children. I was driving them to, I was already in the military. I had gone through boot camp. I had come home. I was, um, I was with my kids, watching my kids. We were going to the playground, and I had a video of training, hand-to-hand -hand stuff that I was going to be submitting on public access. I was driving there. I, I, I first heard about 9-11 because the person who worked at Public Access was, number one, a student of mine, number two, in the National Guard with me, and number three, a Muslim, okay? And so it was really strange, all these three things all coming to a head on 9-11 for me, okay? And obviously, I'm part of the New York National Guard, the Air National Guard, so for years and years. So a lot of things happened, but never before have we been in a position where we have to do something, okay? Um, there's a point where the Titanic is sinking where you have to abandon the ship, okay? There's nothing else you can do. You've tried everything else. And I, with APLE, we're not abandoning the ship necessarily, but what we're doing is saying there is nothing else we can do but this, which is the Citizen Response Program, because I believe in America we're already teaching law enforcement stuff and military stuff. We're already doing hand-to-hand -hand stuff for civilians. We have militias for group training, but there's nothing like what we have that we're putting out that, that brings all these components together, okay? Because I was in the military. I was involved in law enforcement in the military. Um, I've been involved in martial arts for over 25 years, okay? And I've also had connections with different militia groups through the years too, okay? So all these, all these different groups are all trying to do the same kind of thing in a different way, but the problem is none of them are communicating. This was the problem in 9-11. Um, the FBI and the CIA weren't talking, and the local PDs weren't talking, so when something happened on our homeland soil, it was about, well, whose jurisdiction is this? Uh, who has the information? How come if you knew this, you were holding this from me? And there's all this other stuff that happens, as we say, way above my pay grade, so it's not even worth listening to talk show radio hosts about well, what, what conspiracy actually happened and all this stuff. I can tell you, as being a citizen of New York State, 9-11 did happen. I've been to the memorial. Um, it was not staged. It was not started to start a war on Islam, okay, uh, by our government. This is something that happened because bad guys tried to kill lots of people, lots of innocent lives, okay? And at that point, after 2011, 2001, people began to say, what are we going to do? Okay, for some of you, this is ancient history. For some of you, you're hearing about, you're like, well, what does 9-11 have to do with now? It's 2018, okay? Here's what it has to do with. There was a paradigm shift in our nation, and we needed to learn how to fight better to stand up against bad guys, okay? In the military, we have an oath that we say. 
I swear to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Okay? Foreign has to do with the fight over there. Okay? Domestic has to do with the fight that's here. Okay? In the last couple of years, we've seen more and more and more active school shooters, movie theater shooters, uh, nightclub shooters, church shooters. Okay? These have all been domestic situations in a lot of ways, although some of them have ties to... To, to foreign terror groups, okay? More and more and more. Some, some of them are individual uh, bad guys and some of them are team bad guys. It does not matter. But I believe there's four things that we have to train. There's four necessary steps that I believe all Americans need to be trained in in order to be able to defend against this, okay? There's a, there's a Bible verse that says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard, okay? The idea is you're under attack. What do you do in a castle when you're under attack? You raise the drawbridge, you put the, you put the soldiers around, the, around the, the castle walls. And I believe in America, the biggest problem in America for Americans is we are failing to realize that we are all part of this fight, okay? In the Air Force. I'll tell you a little bit about the Air Force. I was in the Air Force for 13 years. Um, the first few years, I joined as a cook. The responsibility to, do, to fight as a cook in the Air Force was none. We were responsible to make sure the food was ready at, time, at the time that it needed to be ready. We were responsible to make sure there was beds to sleep in when it was time to go to bed. We were responsible for mortuary. We were responsible to make sure we tested everybody for a fitness test every year. We had nothing to do with shooting guns other than the fact that every member of the military needs to qualify with a weapon. Okay? When I first joined, it was once every three years we needed to shoot. And that changed. Okay? 9-11 happened. Things started changing. When I first went to boot camp in, in August of 2000, we carried uh, folders with our books in it. Now, boot camp, and even in the Air Force, are carrying weapons, okay? Dummy weapons, because it's important. Everybody, the mindset shifted. But see, if you're not a part of the military, you wouldn't know this, that your mindset as a citizen needs to shift too, okay? If you, if you grow up in Israel, you know that every day when you get on the school bus, or every day when you go on a field trip, there is a possibility of a terrorism threat of being attacked. Okay, this is why when I was over there last year, I see little kids training Krav Maga. I see uh, we were at a, tr uh, a kibbutz, which is like a community uh, for, for, for Israelis, right? Just not, not military. It used to be a military thing, but now it's just a, a community, okay? And everybody does their part. But the training compound where Amit Himmelstein trained his... his, his uh, students, you'd see little five and four-year-old kids staring in the windows all day long watching because they know that at some point they're going to need to do that too. They're going to need to get involved. And at some point, they're going to turn 18 and they're going to join the military. So they need to know this stuff. And this guy is a respected trainer. And he trains the military. And he trains security. He trains civilians. In America, if you're, if you're somebody who loves the martial arts, you, you get involved in martial arts teaches you basic hand-to-hand -hand stuff. Maybe some weapons disarms if you're lucky. Maybe some street self-defense seminars and curriculum if you're lucky. But for the most part, you're taught just how to defend yourself from your average bully. Okay? The problem is, 25 years ago, your average bully wasn't wielding AR-15s. Okay? Uh, the problem is, your average bully back in the day just shoved you up against the lockers and took your school lunch money. Nowadays, the average bully is coming into schools with a loaded weapon or a, or a knife and taking out as many innocent lives as possible. Now, in Vietnam, we had to have a paradigm shift too because we were sending American soldiers into Vietnam and we were saying only shoot at military targets. The problem was they were looking for guys dressed in uniforms and there weren't guys dressed in uniforms, okay? There were women, <coughs> <coughs> children, farmers, okay, mowing down troops. There's a lot of reasons for that, and I'm not going to get into Vietnam. But what I'm saying is, in order to survive, American soldiers had to make a paradigm shift and be able to further define what is a combatant and what is a non-combatant. I talked about this before. Anyways, four modules, okay? Unarmed response. Armed response, single, single member response, and team response. These are the four components of Apley Combatants from this point forward. This is our approach to... Equipping leaders in defense of freedom, okay? To equip, equip leaders to defend freedom, okay? So how do we do this? Everybody is a leader, okay? Here's another problem. In the martial arts world, we have grandmasters, okay? 
We have guys that are the top of the top. They're the best of the best. They're the Bruce Lee of their system, okay? And they have guys underneath them that are, are good but not as good. And then they have guys underneath them that are just getting their black belts and guys underneath them all the way down to white belt. The problem is this creates the idea that when a threat is, let's say a threat comes into the school, what do the white belts do? They look to the black belts to defend them, right? They look to the masters to defend them. The problem in America is if you're an adult, you have a responsibility to defend your family, okay? There's no reason, if you have, if you think of America as a castle, okay, a lot of people don't like Donald Trump, okay? But one of the things Donald Trump says is we're going to build a wall. One of the things I like about that, separated from the issue, is the idea that America is a castle and there's holes in the wall, okay? So the truth of the matter is, I guarantee you that if you have not been thinking along these lines, there's holes in the walls of your own family's situation. I, every situation, uh, we talked already about Halloween. I had lots of conversations with people like, well, what would you do if you're involved? And I was like, I'd do this, 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 and this. And people were like, I would never do any of that. You know, do you run to the sound of gunfire or run away? So, what, do, what is coming? What is coming? I, I'm telling you, if, if you're a professional and you want to get involved in this, because here's what we had. We had shootings. Um, officer, I'm going to just read my notes here. Officer Scott Peterson, age 54. If nobody knows who that is. If, you, if that doesn't ring a bell, he was a school resource officer. If that doesn't ring a bell, he was in Florida. And for four minutes, while shooting was going on inside of a school, he stayed outside. Okay? So what does this tell me? This tells me this is, this is the pulse of America, even in law enforcement and the military. We do not expect to be attacked on our home soil. Okay, even though it's happening, we're still, behind, we're still behind the learning curve because we're not up to speed, okay? We're waiting for the experts. This guy, interestingly enough, he was 54 years old. When do you think you retire in law enforcement? Probably 55, he was really close. And what did he say on that day? I'm really close to retiring. I'm not going to get killed I'm my, I'm my, in my last year of the job, maybe, okay? I'm not telling you what he said. I'm just guessing. Let you do the guesswork. Another thing, he was getting paid $75,000 a year was his salary. Now, in my opinion, that's a good salary. But guess what? No money is worth throwing your, throwing your life in front of a bullet. So this is the problem. The, the leave it to the professionals idea says... I'm getting paid to be a defender when I believe that if you're an American and you love things that are American, you should be a defender. At the very smallest micro element, you should be able to defend your family and your loved ones. On a little bit larger element with a little bit more training and equipping, you could defend your, help defend your community if something was to happen. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not saying, oh my gosh, we're, we're going to have a zombie apocalypse. I'm saying, look what's happening just in the last few years. You could go to the movies tomorrow and something could happen and are you prepared for that? You could go get on a bus, okay, or you could go somewhere to a public event, a sporting event, any event, and find that you're in the middle of something, okay? This happened, the first big incident of this happening in America was 9-11, Flight 93. These people got on an airplane that day and never thought that they would be fighting terrorists from a Middle Eastern country that they didn't know about, okay? They didn't even know what the issues were, okay? They never thought that, that would happen. But they were there on the front lines of battle, okay? Not because they were special forces, but because they got on an airplane to go do whatever they were going to do that day. So that's what I'm saying is what we need to do as Americans is realize we're on the front lines. Our nation, there's a lot of jealous people out there. If you've been to other countries, there's a lot of people that don't like Americans, okay? And some of them have great reasons to not like Americans, okay? But there's a lot of... Some of the reason is just jealousy because it's a king of the hill competition with world nations. And in a lot of ways, America has been on the top of that hill for a long time. Okay. I don't know that we're going to stay on that top of the hill. There's always somebody trying to push you off the hill. Okay. And maybe nation against nation, it might not happen, but it could happen with small group against nation. Like what happened it was only it wasn't even 25 people involved in the in the you know groups of four or five terrorists getting on airplanes and taking down hundreds of people taking out thousands of people okay so this is what you got to consider the guy who in in the in the Las Vegas shooting that just happened uh, uh, in the within the last year or so took out hundreds of people with his weapons okay now we're again Americans we've been so we've gotten so soft okay 
We've gotten so soft in America, we've forgotten what it is to defend our families. We've forgotten how to defend ourselves, okay? Again, small groups, there's a small percentage in America, the law enforcement community, the military community, the martial arts community to a certain extent. Maybe even you could add in the preppers and the militia guys, okay? The shooting, the gun enthusiasts, okay? The guys just like shooting, sports shooting guys. But that's still a very tiny, tiny percent of America. The, everybody else says, you know what? That's not my job, okay? Unfortunately, the guys whose job it is, like this 54-year-old resource officer, also said, that's not my job. And if your kids were in that school on that day, that's a big problem, okay? My daughter, I have a nine-year-old daughter at the time of this recording, and I go into her elementary school, and last year I noticed another thing that, that's changed. There's a sign now that says, uh, no guns in school, no, please do not bring your, you know, gun-free zone, do not bring your weapon in the school, okay? But what if I'm a cop? Oh, 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 cops are different. But what if I'm, I used to be a cop, and I'm fully trained as a police officer or a peace officer, and now I'm just a private citizen. Well, sir, unless you're a police officer, we don't want you with your gun. Why? Because I'm not getting paid for the training that I had for years and years and years that could be the, the only thing that stops your child from getting killed? Well, when you put it like that, of course. But here's the problem. We're not arguing. People aren't even having these logical arguments because... We are afraid of guns. We are afraid of these issues. We don't want to talk about them. We don't want to look at them. It's too scary for us. We want to do like what a little kid does in a movie theater when it's scary. We want to do this, close our eyes, cover our ears, and crawl up in a fetal position and hope it ends soon. That's what happened when that guy went into a movie theater with, with assault rifles. That's what most everybody did. Okay? I've talked to several of my buddies and who tell me that if they were in that movie theater, they would have returned fire. Recently, I've talked to them. Why? Because they're trained and they're equipped. And because they wouldn't pay attention to a stupid sign that says, gun-free zone, because, why? Because lives are more important than, than following, you know, stupid rules, okay? And I'm not saying don't follow the rules. What would happen, probably? Let's say a guy messes up. Let's say a guy carries his gun in and he gets patted down by the security officer going into that same movie theater, but instead on that day, there's no shooting. Now that same guy gets arrested for carrying his, his, his gun in a gun-free zone. So this is a problem, okay? We put signs up in the 50s and 60s, too, that said whites can eat here and blacks can eat here. And uh, you can use this, this seat in the front of the bus if you're this type of person and this seat in the back of the bus if you're this type of person, okay? All these ideas on what is, we're going to make a sign about it, we're going to make a rule about it, whether it's right or wrong. And I'm telling you these rules are wrong. Gun-free zones are wrong because... We're creating more holes. You know what a gun-free zone is to a bad guy? It's a fucking window in the in the it's a it's a it's a window left unlocked in your house that a, that a bad guy can crawl through, okay? Or a back door left open. That's what it is. That's not having a dog in your house to be a watchdog, okay? So quickly before I get off track, here's the two events that we're doing in September in Connecticut. I'm going to be with John Maddow, the infidel, in Connecticut. He has spent years and years and years training hand-to-hand -hand stuff, Krav Maga. So the title of that course is Citizen Response and Krav Maga Instructor Development. Are we passing out certificates so everybody can start their own Krav Maga school at the end? Not necessarily. If you have the skills, if you're already running a program, then sure, we will help stand behind you. Now you'll be armed with more training. We're going to be doing stuff at this course we have never done before in Krav Maga trainings. So a lot of you have been following me for years. Oh, I've been to Mark's instructor crowd training. Well, yeah, you have, but you've never seen it done like this because this is not just Krav Maga, okay? Krav Maga, by itself, is not an, with uh, the unarmed response, the way it's kind of understood in America, the belt system, the, you know, how to get out of a choke, how to stop a club swinging at your head, all that stuff is not enough, okay? You need more than that. You need to know how to return fire in a, in a crowded movie theater without hurting somebody, okay? You need to know how to operate under stress with an armed response. You need to know how to mobilize the three or four other team, potential team members on your airplane to take out the bad guys so that the, so that the White House is saved or whatever that airplane was intended to crash at. So another problem. We think that Americans who are not professionals, the guys not getting paid, are the bad guys. I already gave you the one example about my kids' elementary school, but let me give you another example. All right. 
We wait for the cops to show up. Oh, I'm a man of God. I'm a pastor. I'm not a fighter. I, I follow the path of peace. Okay, fine. But if that pastor had a mindset of, if he knew, if somebody called him that morning and said, bro, they're coming for you today. The Grim Reaper is coming, dressed in the form of a 26-year-old kid, and he's coming to take out your whole entire church. I guarantee you he would have carried a weapon, okay? Guarantee you he would have. I guarantee you if he wasn't, he would have armed his, his members of his congregation. Have you ever carried your weapon to church? I have, okay? I used to have a Bible case that I'd, I'd put my handgun in and carry it to church, okay? Guess what? That church on that day was safer than all the other churches where people were like, guns are for, you know, they're secular. We're, we're, we're trusting God, okay? Trusting God also came in the form of the, the guy who was the neighbor next door who heard gunshots grabbed his weapon and, and responded. And then after this dude dropped his weapon and left, he got in a vehicle and chased him down the road and, and, and shut him down, stopped the threat, okay? Why did this happen? Because you know, one of the reasons, he's, he lives in Texas, he, he was interviewed, he was like, well, I just thought that's what a good guy would do, you know? Of course that is what a good guy would do. The problem is 99% of the people talking about this kind of stuff in America we're not teaching people to do this stuff. This is why Israel is so important in America's survival. The, the Israeli mindset, they are a young nation that have had to think along the lines of, what happens if our school field trip is interrupted by bad guys shooting and running at us with knives? They've had to think about these things. They've had to think about, what happens if somebody tries to take over our airplane? The airport security in Israel is the best, okay, in the world. Okay, so... <coughs> After 9-11, who do you think we called to help us out? Okay, so, in fact, many of you in the martial arts world they never even heard about Krav Maga until after 9-11. Okay, and all of a sudden it just came onto the scene, okay? So, the another, I want to tell you about another course. The other course that we're going to be doing is in November. It's going to be November, so the first course, Citizen Response and Krav Maga Development, is September 7th through 9th. We're going to spend three days... We're going to do night training. We're going to do stress training. We're going to do armed response training. We're going to do Krav Maga hand-to-hand -hand stuff too, okay? We're going to do everything. We're going to cover everything we can cover in three days, which is a very small window of time, but we're going to cover a lot of material. Next, in November, it's almost like part two. So if you come in September, save some money up, come in November too. So November 9th through 11th, we're actually getting on the range with weapons, and we're going to do some armed response stuff, okay? We also have, I bring in an expert for that training as well. His name is, Demo is his, is his call sign. He has been involved with NYPD for years and years, retired. He's been involved in executive, protect, executive protection. He's been involved in the security industry, the armed private law enforcement industry, okay, as a professional. And he's bringing all his skill sets into, this, into the training environment with us. We will be recording both of these trainings too because what we are doing is so fresh. I don't even have videos to turn people to and say, check this out. This is what we're going to be doing. I got videos for days of SWAT guys running around doing this stuff. I don't have videos of civilians doing it. Okay, I got videos for days of martial arts guys training, punching, and kicking. I don't have videos of private citizens coming and doing this kind of stuff. So we're going to do three-day training in November 9th, 10th, and 11th. We're going to do some dry fire stuff. We're going to do some single shooter stuff. We're going to do some team shooter stuff, some team drills, okay? We're going to talk about the Israeli method as far as how it applies to shooting. Um, all these four modules, unarmed, armed, single, and team, all four modules overlap, okay? So the more you go to, the more prepared you're going to be. We want you to bring this back to your communities. This is not so much for starting a business, though if you want to do that, we can help you do that. If you're looking to start a school, sure, we'll help you do that. If your instructor told you about this course and you're looking to start a school across, his, across the street from him, I'm not going to help you because I've had that happen to me probably five times in the last 20 years. So not interested in helping create competition for, your, for, for the people that are training you and, and, and paying big bills to do it. So, But... We will help you if you're a person that doesn't have anybody in your area. We need to set people up so that if I have somebody call me from in Vermont saying, I want a training, I can't get to Connecticut. I can't get to Ohio. What can I do? 
I can't get to Oregon. We say, hey, we, I got a Vermont guy. Go start training with him. The next training we have is months from now, but you can start immediately training. When is the time to start the training? Yesterday, because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Am I trying to make you afraid? No. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you to help me, which is what does helping me do? I have a grandson on the way. I want him to grow up in America, not in whatever replaces America because America didn't realize we were under attack. Okay? I had an Israeli Special Forces guy say that 9 11 was the beginning of the all, was when jihad came to America. Okay? That was the beginning of it for Americans, but it's been going on in Israel for years and years and years. Okay? So we need to wrap our minds around this. Okay? This is not about your politics. Hey, we're not, this is not about, you know, if you're a racist. We don't want you in our organization. If you are part of a hate group, we don't want you in our organization. We want good people who love America, who want to see their children and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren raised in the same kind of environment that they were raised in, which is a place where there's opportunities, a place where you can pick what job you want to be when you, when you grow up, a place where you can carry your weapons freely as an American. You know, I, I saw a statement the other day. It says, when the First Amendment doesn't work, the Second Amendment does. Isn't it interesting that the first two amendments was one, was the right to, to express yourself, okay, to say what you wanted to say, First Amendment, and the Second Amendment was the right to enforce that with the Second Amendment. These are the first two amendments in, the, in you know, like, are you kidding me, guys? Why are we trying to get rid of these? Okay, even in New York State right now, we, I live in what's called an outlaw state, and that's a state where the, you ever seen the Hunger Games? The people, this is my, this is my dog, by the way. In the Hunger Games, they basically... They basically um, had an elite group called the Capitol where all the resources were while everybody surrounding them, the surrounding villages, were starving. Guess what? This is what some of the, uh, the, the political elite want to happen, okay? I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. If you're not behind the right to bear arms for every American citizen, then you're wrong, okay? Uh, if you're not behind... The protection of life for every American citizen, born or unborn, you're wrong. So, I mean, if you're not, you know, you have a right to defend yourself. You have a right to defend your, your neighbor. If you see your neighbor being attacked, you have a right to get involved. We're going to talk about all these courses, something that's taught in the military and law enforcement, which is called use of force, which means when am I allowed to get involved? And at what level can I get involved? Okay, we're going to talk about this. Okay, we're going to talk about using deadly force which is, you know, taking somebody out, taking out a bad guy because other lives are in danger or being taken out. So we're going to talk about the correct response. To give, to, to, to spend all this time and energy giving public citizens squirt guns when the enemy is shooting real bullets is a major problem in America. I don't care what your job is. I don't care if you're the governor of New York State. I don't care if you're the president of, New York, of the United States. If you're not behind America on these issues... Then you're, then you're definitely going to be, you know, have a problem with me, okay? Because I believe that America is in danger. So, anyways, enough of that. Uh, I hope to see you September 7th, 8th, and 9th. Course is $500, and I'm telling you, it's pennies compared to what I've, I've paid and what my instructors have paid to, to pull this material together for you guys. You're going to get a lot of material in those three days. It's hours and hours jam-packed. Bring all your equipment, bring your sparring gear, bring your your gloves, bring your groin protection, bring everything. If you don't got any of that stuff, we got some stuff for you. Not groin cup, but we got everything else, okay? Um, November 9th, 10th, and 11th, executive protection strategies and armed response, citizen armed response. Do you need to be a professional to do these courses? Hopefully you heard the rest of my video. You do not. All you have to be is a concerned citizen. Who are you? I'm a concerned citizen. Who is that guy who, who put down the, the, the active shooter in the, Texas, in, uh, in the Texas church shooting, it was a concerned citizen, okay? Be a concerned citizen. Start getting prepared. Um, if you want to store bottles of water and, and, and freeze-dried food that lasts for 25 years, great. Okay, you can do that. But I'm telling you, a more problematic threat right now that you can do something about is, is being prepared to defend your community, to being prepared to return, you know, in, you know, be prepared to return the force that's being that's being when you're under attack, okay? And if you're not, if the only thing you've ever thought about is squirt guns, you're not prepared. If the only thing you've ever thought about is call 911, that's the squirt gun, okay? There's nothing wrong with calling 911, 
Okay? There's nothing wrong with waiting for the professionals. In some situations, there's no other choice but to wait. You're in a bank robbery, you're a police officer. But you're in a bank robbery, guess what? If you pulling your own weapon and shooting the bank robbers is going to cause more people to get killed, you don't pull your weapon. You just do what they tell you to do. Okay? So they even have to wait for the professionals to arrive. Okay? But sometimes the faster that you get to respond, the less people that die. Okay? If we would have caught those bad guys going through security, we would have a lot of alive, a lot more people alive on 9-11. Okay? So my name is Mark, the Juggernaut. This has been an Apley update. Looking forward to seeing you in September, November. And uh, you got questions, message me. Law enforcement, military, you guys are welcome at this training too. Uh, we, we love to have you, more of you, your expertise, as well as professionals in the security industry. Um, but also private citizens. You don't have to be a black belt. You don't have to be a, a martial arts instructor to come to this course. But this is, this is instructor level material. So just come with that understanding. All right. Talk to you soon.